Hi everyone, so as you're aware, every Monday I'm go I've been uploading videos and um, book reviews and I said I'm going to start this in January and I'm continuing to do so and I've read so far some really good books and one of the books that, one of the books I'll be reviewing today is called Confident and Killing It and it's by Tiwalola Ogun Lens Lessie. Do you know what, I'm probably not pronouncing that right but um, what I like about this book, now as you can see it's a very, very thick book, look at that and the print is really small so what I want to say to people is Sometimes when you're choosing a book, I'm someone that will usually go for the title. But then also, if you know that you are someone that doesn't enjoy reading lengthy books, so you know you want those little snapshots, you want smaller books to get through quite quickly. Or if you're someone that prefers a particular type of book, then always make sure you're aware of that. You can go on um, Amazon sometimes and you can look at um, mini chapters on there or you can just check out how many pages. But anyway, this book it is really lengthy, but it does have, um, it has examples in there. It has quotes in there. It has um, pictures in there as well. So it's not just based on um, print. Now I've taken a lot of notes, but I'm going to try and narrow it down because as I've said, I'm aiming for um, 10 minutes per book review or 15 minutes. But basically the book has great information. I've said that some chapters are a bit too long and a bit too wordy, but overall I love the mantras in the book. There's a mantra after each chapter. I love the examples of success stories. There's a lot of information to process, but it's all useful, valuable information. I gave this book 8 out of 10, so that's one of my highest scores that I've been given, given to these books. The reason I gave it 8 out of 10 is because what I like is when I read a book that I can apply to myself, but I can always also use with my clients for my coaching and for my counselling, and it really taps into the work that I do, but also taps into what I do as a, with personal development, then I'm really, I really get into it. So that's why with this book, although it was lengthy, it took me quite a long time to read through it all because I only do a few chapters a day. Every single chapter, I was just like, wow, this is more information. Wow, I can use this with my clients. Wow, this really is powerful. So I'm going to talk about a few of the things. It talks about our thoughts influence our feelings and our feelings influence the actions we take. Our thoughts become beliefs when we think and act in accordance with them. We can't control what thoughts pop into our head but we can control whether a negative thought is repeated so much that it turns into a limiting belief. It's not rocket science or stuff that we haven't heard before, but I think sometimes it's worth reminding ourselves that it is about these thoughts and these limiting beliefs that can prevent you from doing so many things. There's a few other books that I'm going to be reading this year and reviewing that are on a similar path to this, where it talks about getting rid of those limiting beliefs. So it says the more you love and believe in yourself, and in your capabilities, the less space you have to care about what other people think of you. Again, these are only little snapshots from the book, but it has whole chapters talking about, you know, the pointlessness, which I say to all my clients, of comparing yourself, because then that is diminishing your uniqueness. What's the point in looking at what someone else has or what someone else looks like or how they live their life? That's their life. Let them get on with it. So there's a lot of things in here about self-esteem. It talks about having rest, not viewing rest as a reward, but viewing rest as um, essential. Because it says, no one ever said I'll eat once, I've achieved all my goals, because food is essential for the body and you won't achieve anything on an em empty stomach. So you have to view rest as the same way. So there's chapters on here about people pleasing, saying yes to everyone and everything while saying no to yourself. There's a really good chapter where it gives you ways to say no without using the word no. And I've, used, I've given that to my clients. So it gives you a list of ways to say how you are going to still say no. So it's about boundaries, but you are going to put it in place in a way that makes you feel comfortable. So that's about communicating your needs. There's books on there. There's um, a chapter, a reframing technique. So name the fear, what's making you feel anxious. There's a, um, things about what can you be grateful for in some situations? What will happen if you keep focusing on negative energy? How would you rather think or act? What can you do today to move you closer to your ideal situation? There's talk, um, issue, things on here about failure. Um, and it's saying the only way to find out what the future holds is to take action now. Fear stops you from trying. Fear keeps you from growing. 
It holds you back in life when you don't grow or make progress. Your potential begins to, to die. So there's some really good things in there. There's also something called the negative thought detector. So the three questions you would ask are, is this 100% fact or am I making an assumption? This is when you have a negative thought. Would I ever say this to a friend? Does this thought sabotage me or empower me? This is me all day long. This is what I do with my clients. This is what I've been doing this morning. Talking about this idea, um, difference between fact and evidence. You know, is it factual? Is it um, is your belief or your negative thought a fact? Sorry, or is it opinion? Where's the evidence to back up the fact? Where's the evidence contrary to that fact? So this is, yeah, what you're doing is you're being a detective in this situation and you're asking yourself these questions. And then finally she puts, if a thought sabotages you, bin it. If a thought empowers you, run with it. So I love that. I love the fact that she is just straight to the point. There's chapters on, um, another chapter just says, just because you don't know the way through your challenges doesn't mean you're not capable of overcoming them. So you don't always have to know what's holding you back. You don't always have to keep digging. Even as a counsellor, sometimes I'll say, do you know what? I'll ask my client a question and they say, I don't know why I'm feeling like this. And then we'll try to dig and figure it out. But we might get to a point where we say, do you know what? It's not even important why you feel the way you do. It's just important that's how you feel. So let's work on changing that feeling rather than digging to try to figure it out. We don't always have to figure out why we're feeling the way we do, but we do have to make a conscious effort to say that we're going to try to make things better. So there's a quote somewhere, if I can get to my book. <laughs> I'm in my car, so it's a bit um, tricky. So in fact, should I go for the quote? I don't even know what the quote is. So yeah, this is the quote. I'm just going to read it to you at the book. As you get more intentional about being your authentic self, and live in from your power circle, your mind will often feel like a battlefield, but your newfound confidence and power will be in, um, will be in a tussle with your old thoughts and behaviours that have been running the show. So one of the biggest confidence killers you'll come up against is the negative voice in your head called the mean girl. And she gives you so many tips on how to get rid of this um, inner critic the mean girl in your head and there's a great exercise which I've done with some of my clients and that is where we do something called a power circle that's the final thing I'm going to talk about the power circle is where you talk about your strengths your values and your passions and there's lots of exercises to do that so you talk about the values that are important to you and you implement them into your life you talk about the strengths that you have and there's exercises to help you to do that and then you talk about your passions and what it's called is the power circle because those three things should um, that those three things should integrate into your life. So anytime you're doing something which isn't in line with your passions, anytime you're doing something which goes against the strengths that you hold, so the negative thoughts and stuff like that, any time you're doing something which is against your values, then you shouldn't be doing it. And what she does is helps you to integrate those things into your life so that you have a better life and that you are confident and killing it. So for me, um, I've wrote down, I gave this eight out of 10. Um, and as I've said, it was just because I really, really connected with the book. I could relate to the book. I know that I can use it with my clients and they're going to be happy. I know that I can implement some of the things and I just, I like the title and what's happened sometimes is some of these books have got a banging title. It's like, yeah, feel the fear and do it anyway or whatever the title is and the content does not match up because they're selling the book based on this wham bam title but then you read it and you think, well, wait a minute, this isn't really what I thought and I was very disappointed in a few books which I'll do the review on. This book, the title matches the content because I couldn't put it down I loved it and I think it is definitely um, a good book I recommend it so that is confident and killing it I'll put the every thumbnail has got the book on there so that you can see the author and you can see the title of the book thanks for watching feel free to leave your um, thoughts feel free to share this and feel free to um, subscribe if you want to so every Monday it will be a book review every Thursday, a counselling related topic. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Bye.